Well, let me begin first by thanking all of the teachers and the students. I heard the good work you ladies did last week, Saturday. You went out there on your own and put together your resources, had a little dying practical lesson. That was actually very impressive. And I want to say thank you for the effort. Because what that shows to me is that you ladies, uh, the students and the instructor, you are very much, you guys are working together and very much interested in doing your best in making sure that you learn to be self-sufficient. Um, the problem is that I have planned, I'm planning my the way I want things done, but Sometimes God, we just have to go by the flow the way God wants things. I'm only concerned more about the fact that when we're using the tie-dye material, there are chemicals, and I don't want us using chemicals around places that children play. At the center of there, kids go out there to play, and I don't want a child to mistakenly put something in their mouth, and we have some accident that. Uh, will bring sadness to the school and the community. That's why I'm more uh, uh, alert to the practical. I was talking to your your director. We need to find a place. I'm actually willing to invest a thousand dollars in this whole process for the Tada department. And I want to show you all, today. I will be showing you how much profiting and how much people need the material around the world and how much investment is done around the world globally when it comes to fabric uh, coloring and designs so I need you guys to be patient with me we are working together this is going to happen it may not happen overnight but trust me God in heaven know how much or how much of a sleepless night I have uh, just for this program and how much I want everything to work for our good the bible said god work everything for our good let me just dive right into the training the first thing we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be talking about color mixtures what do i mean when i say color mixtures the color mixtures is when you combine colors together to form one color you combine two or more colors to form one color so that's the first thing we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing our color mixtures today. What colors can you mix and what color can you get when you mix that color? So that's what we're going to be doing. I put the chat out. If you have your phone, take a picture of this chat right here. Or if you have pen and paper, I want you to copy the color mixtures. Primary color. Primary color number one is red. When you take one spoon of red of the dye, one spoon of yellow, and one spoon of orange, you mix them together, it will give you the color primary, it will give you red, dark, deep red, or it will give you red orange, like deep orange. So if you want a deep orange, you mix red and yellow so we made sorry you miss red and yellow it will give you orange red and yellow equals orange yellow plus blue equals green blue plus red equals violet what we call in Liberia purple so you can get a purple color when you mix the blue dye and the red dye so these are just some of the few colors you can mix and what color you can get. So if you miss, I go over it again. One spoon of red dark and one spoon of yellow dark, you will get an orange color. One spoon of yellow plus one spoon of blue, you will get a green color. One spoon of blue plus one spoon of red, you're gonna get what? a violet color. Violet is like purple. When it says violet, 
is like purple color so the violet is like purple you will get the violet color so for today that's the three things I want to teach you when it comes to color mixtures so you don't have to buy green dye if you have yellow and blue dye already sometimes you're dying and you put the red dye on the cloth and you put yellow dye and all of a sudden you see orange in the clothes it's because those two colors when they meet together they give you an orange color okay so that's your color mixtures that's your first lesson to the color mixtures I got a series of video presentation we're going to be doing a lot of video presentation today I have a series of video presentation the first video presentation we're going to be doing is folding and dyeing folding last week or oh, I know your instructor told you you're going to be doing your stitching and tying so also when you fold the cloth and you dye the cloth what it look like so you fold it and tie the folding what it look like I'm going to be presenting some of the video from some of our contributors those that actually contribute to our training program
that's why you always have to work as a team. You have to work as a team. You guys have to work as a team. Two or three people join together as a team. This is a teamwork. If you work as a team, you do a great job. It's not a woman thing. It's a teamwork. Sun, on the cold, on the cold shapes, so the ink, the dry, and the color mixtures come out. guys so that was our first lesson our presentation the second presentation is actually from Ghana our first second presenter is from Ghana they did what are called the batik work so you're gonna see our second presenter is from Ghana she has a company in Ghana and did produce the batik now what is a batik batik is when they use the candle to design on the label on the on the bazaar or on the cotton cloth they use a candle. You can use a stem or you can get a brush and you draw whatever you want to draw. You can draw your child name if you want. You can draw your own name on the cloth. It's called, they use candle for designing. So it's called batik. It's an artwork that you use on the lapel. So you stay tuned. So now, you're the shape of the size of the block. You have what you call the motifs. Different types of motifs. And then they with the trunk back. Now, we've gone into sizing it. The stamp is coated in the wax and placed on the cotton fabric. This is an easy stamp. Okay, we have to make sure it's gone in, not too much. Maybe one gap and go to the second. The waxed part will now be resistant to the colored dye into which a cherry becker will eventually dip the fabric. Made by hand, every piece is different. Over the years, a cherry becker has hand carved hundreds of different motifs with typically Ghanaian themes. I love love. We have the favorite that is universal is the um, Jinyani. People like the Jinyani. hundreds of different designs. Ghana is famous for its textiles, but in recent years the local market has met stiff competition from cheaper mass-produced fabrics from overseas. Achiri Beko says it's made it more important than ever to focus on making each piece a work of art. It's all about the place now, so you don't get much money for it. When you go to the market, it's easier, but the fabric itself is not our thing. It's got the colors you can get, but the artwork is what gets in. So I always tell them to put more into it, more into creating, than just doing the copycat work, just haphazard. This is a Cherry Becker's latest piece. We take it dry. We draw the, what you want for design, like an art, an art painting with, with the wax. With a lot of care, the fabric is plunged into a mix of dye and chemicals. It's then hung out to dry. It'll eventually get another hand coating of wax and a third dipping into another colour. After the fabrics have been perfected, dried and then pressed, this is what you have. A range of beautiful colours. So what you saw there was our own African sister in Ghana, our mother in Ghana. She have a company and they produce batik designs that people from all around the world go to Ghana and they buy it. So um, I'm going to also show you another presentation by a brother from Jamaica. And this presentation is about art using batik. Art. 
So what it means is that somebody who is a good artist will draw on the cloth and then the candles is applied on the cloth and the designing are done. So you sit down, I have my brother from, he's from Jamaica, he got a presentation presented to me. I'm gonna present that to you guys. Uh, okay, hang right in there. One of these drawings can go for thousands or five hundred, eight hundred dollars on one of those artworks. They're very expensive. Some of those artworks are in God and bigger museums and galleries around. So fabric designs is a big deal now because those that do what they call interior designing are now custom and you know, you know, combining fabric design with interior designing. So if you are, if you know your tailoring and you know your fabric design you can go into interior design and you can be a rich a very you can make a lot of money. I'm my purpose is for you guys to grow beyond Liberia. Then you go grow beyond when you dream, dream state, beyond where you are. Draw your sketch. Always dream beyond where you are. And God in his own infinite mercy will always make your dreams come to reality if you stick to your dream. Okay? Keep watching the presentation. Third stage is where you're going to outline what you've drawn with hot wax. After that, you're going to paint as though you're painting on a canvas or you're just painting a watercolor.
So as you can see, the, 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 they apply the candle. So as you apply the dye, the dye would prevent the candle. The, 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 the candle would prevent the dye from crossing on the other side or where you don't want the dye to go. That's what we're doing right there. I heard uh, one of the, uh, somebody said to me, I don't want to do tie dyeing. That is an artwork. It costs a lot of money abroad. So you do not know what you could really be profiting from if you put your mind to artwork. So some of you will be expert in tailoring, some of you will be expert in art. See that gentleman, people leave from all around the world, Australia, America, that goes to his studio. I'm gonna paint it a uh, second time. You're gonna use the colors a little darker and you're gonna and the paint it would go right in those areas where you did not put the wax so as to bring out your detail. this several times you can wax and paint wax and paint but after this you're gonna wax the whole thing you're gonna cover the whole thing with wax because you want to protect all the detail that you've done When the wax is cool, it gets hard on the fabric, so what you do is to break the wax. We give it what we call a crackle. thing in a pan of dye. The dye would only go into the cracks. It's what gives it this vein and this crackling effect. Hang it for about a day or so, so the colors can set. And after that you boil it in hot water. When you boil it in the hot water, it removes the excess wax removes the excess dye from the fabric and the fabric will become will um, come back to its natural six state.
that you guys can see exactly so that's your lesson for today I decided to make the lesson the training section not too long so that uh, uh, they don't have to spend a long time downloading your training sections so um, I want us to practice I want you guys to practice I'm going to talk to the um, director we have to find a place purposely for the tie-dye department we're going to build uh, something like a kitchen or even if it's a tash that you guys can work far from where children are going to be and people are going to be I need it to be safe a safe environment is what I need because we're going to be working with chemicals and I don't want children around chemical or people who don't have gloves on their hands or even face masks on their mouth to play with chemical I want it to be safe it's for you to grow enjoy what you're learning not for you to get hurt so see you next class um, you guys practice your stitching I was told today you guys are gonna be doing that okay talk to you guys later